In the words of Steve Jobs, design is not what it looks like and feels like, design is how it works. Today, we're going to talk about usability because usability is all about our users, right? So what is usability? Usability is a term that refers to how users engage, learn and get some sort of satisfaction from interacting with the application that you're building. There are several factors that affect how your um, how your application is being used or how it affects the usability or how users interact with it. So we're going to talk about several of these factors to help you as you're going to build your design and, and start going through the whole process of designing your application so that you can take this into consideration, especially considering your target audience. If you want to, please look at back at the video of three things that you can do um, to improve your design process. And in one of those, we talked about users. Again, usability is all about users. I would like for you to remember that as we're going through this process. So stay tuned. Now, the first thing is use of the usability factors that affect your sites are page loading times. As we talked before, mobile devices are one of the primary ways in which users access your website. So if you consider that the longer a page takes to load, the more than likely users will not stick around on that site and leave. So you have to consider as you're building your website, how heavy are your images? How many fonts are you loading on the site, et cetera, et cetera. All of these things are very important because users that visit a website, if, if no, there's no response from the site within maybe one to two seconds, more than likely they will leave. So it's something to consider. Now, the second thing that I feel also affects how users interact with your site, and it has a heavy um, effect on as far as how pleased they are with interacting with your site is also typography, or better yet, legibility. When we look at typography, we have to think about things like, for example, the font size, the contrast of the font uh, in regards of its background use. Also, maybe if you have background treatments, like maybe a background color or background images, something that, again, the easier you make it for readers to interact with your site and for them to engage with the content, be able to read it, the better it is. You also have to see, like for example, your font sizes, maybe depending on the screen that you're looking at, you have to consider things like, for example, the line length or the number of characters that you would like to have on each one of your sentences to avoid issues such as, for example, uh, maybe a user losing its place when they're reading your site or even the line height, so the separation between one line and the next. All of these things improve and help with legibility. And these things can also affect other users. Like for example, people that have issues with blindness or that have issues with reading or even men, with which we sometimes suffer from color blindness, that can also affect depending on the colors that you're treating. Again, everything that you're doing on this site has to be considered based on who your target audience is. If your target audience are kids, then focus on that. If they're adults, then focus on that then and interact and create applications that are legible for each one of these groups. Now, considering all of these users, you also have to think about accessibility. We just talked about somebody, maybe a person that, that, has, that is blind or somebody that uh, has problems like with certain uh, colors or maybe Maybe somebody that has issues with hearing all of these things are things that we need to take into consideration as designers as user experience designers as we're going through building our application so for example if you know that somebody might be accessing your site that has um, an issue with seeing your website then we need to be conscious and be able to provide the correct descriptive alternative tags to our images so that they will be able to use their screen reader and understand what those images are. If you're targeting that special group, then you also have to maybe consider not using images as text, but actually using text as you should be using it, semantically correct text, so that it's easier for them to read it through a screen reader. If you haven't done this, I would highly encourage you to go through your browser and your computer device um, settings and then 
to turn on accessibility and see and experience how it would feel if you were somebody that that is not able to see and try to navigate through our website how easy would that be or maybe how hard would that be based on the application you're building also if for example your content has a lot of videos maybe consider providing that transcript or making sure that those videos have closed caption available to them so that they're able to see that content all of these things are in your power to be able to influence and to help those users be able to interact with your application. Again, usability is all about your users. The next thing that we can do to help with in regards of consumption of our website or and, and the content that we have is really how easy are we making the site to be read, to be read. How, do, how easy are we making it so that people can understand the sections and the labels and everything, how we have and created a hierarchy for the content on the site. So we have to look at it and be able to provide, first of all, a very simple design that our target audience will be able to understand, provide clear headings and sections. So if you want a user to move from one section to another, clearly divide those sections so that it doesn't just run from one place to the next to the next, and it is considered as a whole, um, um, visually hierarchy um, application or, or section, right? You want it to be able to break it down into different sections if they are different or keep them together if they're supposed to be together. If you want more information about it, you should look at Gestalt's uh, design principles. They are really good, especially when it talks about how users perceive content in regards of um, how things are laid out as based on being continuous or um, if they kind of have the same shape etc etc so you should check out gestalt design principles as well now the next thing would also be considering for example how your content is written out so my background is in communication technology uh, part of one of the classes that I, I took was journalism and in journalism they teach us how to write content which is in an inverted pyramid meaning the most important things are on the top the least important things are on the bottom so we want to make sure that our users get the most meat, the most content towards the top, and then everything else kind of interspersed throughout the rest of the paragraphs or the rest of the, the page that they're looking at. So when you do that, you are ensuring that users are able to read that content and be able to engage with it. Think about it. When was the last time that you actually read through a full page that wasn't maybe like an assignment or it wasn't something that you were trying to learn from? But when was the last time that, for example, if you were uh, just trying to engage with a brand, when was the last time that you went through the whole site and read it through? Most of us usually scan through the content. So we want to be able to provide options where um, they can just do that, just scan the content. Part of your content creation and content design should include how your pages are named, how the pages are categorized within your site based on your sitemap, as well as how are your titles or headings created on your page. Are they descriptive enough? Are they, do they provide enough information for them to follow through the content and go from point A to point B? Are you guiding the users on what type of experience you want them to have on the site. These are things that you have control when you're thinking about typography and the content that goes into that, that type as well. So keep it in mind, make sure that your site pages, your, your, your URLs are very clear and very descriptive. None of these page one, page two, page three. If it's a products page, they may be product page one, product page two. Again, try to keep it as descriptive as possible so that users know what they're reading and where they're at. Have you ever seen a movie where you, all the pieces are kind of moving around and you don't really know what part of the movie you're in, if it's in the past, present, future, and it's it's kind of jumbles with your mind as far as the type of um, the, the storyline, right? The timeline of that movie. If you've experienced some of those movies, it, it can be a little bit frustrating 
Um, it's interesting from a movie standpoint, but I think that if you're trying to gather data, it gets a little bit harder when it comes to, uh, to having content that doesn't play along with each other very well. So we need to make sure that as users are navigating through the site, that we provide a very consistent design. If you have a specific design, for example, if your design is modern or if your design is minimalist or if your design is grunge or whatever type of design you're going from, if they were to switch to another page and it will be totally different, then you're clashing kind of with, with the mind of the user and kind of giving them the wrong information and making them doubt if they are even in the right page in the right site. So as you're designing your site, I know that it is a temptation to maybe create a page that is different than the rest, but the more that you have pages, how they, they, they interact with each other, they keep the same branding, they keep the same styles, it makes it a lot easier for users to know where they're at, where they've been, and where they're going. Again, Usability is about the user experience. It's all about the user. It's not about us as designers. We designers and our design ideas come secondary to what the purpose is of the site and who we're, we're trying to um, target as we're designing the site. So again, keep that in mind as you're creating your pages. Keep them consistent. Now, as we're working through um, our sites and we've been looking at all of these uh, things and factors that affect the usability on the site, you also have to consider, just like we mentioned in the beginning, most users are accessing your site through mobile devices. If they are accessing your site through mobile devices, that means that your site needs to have a good cross-channel design, meaning the experience that users get on their desktop, on their tablet, on their mobile device should be the same. The brand should remain the same. The interactions and touch points should be the same. The content should be the same. There was a trend in back in the early 2000s where you would have a mobile site that was very um, narrowed down as far as content and then you have your full desktop websites. Back then, maybe you had a few players in regards of mobile devices and as far as content going that would access your site, right? Like and, and mobile devices that would access a site. So for you, now that you live in this, you know, in this era where most users access your website through mobile devices, you need to keep it consistent because some users, the only way that they have to access this, the maybe websites might be through their mobile devices. They might not even have a laptop at home or a tablet. So keep that in mind. Keep your content consistent from one device to another. So again, cross channel. Okay, think about that. And always, my recommendation is for you guys to design first on mobile, then tablet, and then desktop. If you follow that pattern, then you already will start with a baseline so that you can continue uh, building the rest of the views for your site or application. Because mobile is more constructive, more uh, narrow as far as how much space you have, how much content you can put in there, then it kind of gives you a better idea of what's more important. Again, touching base back to say your inverted pyramid putting what's more important at the top, keeping your things that are less important towards the bottom. Very important. So again, usability, it's all about the user. You've heard me say this like 20,000 times in this video and I will continue saying, it's all about the user. When you think about your users, you have to think about them in multiple aspects. Like for example, their demo demographics. Um, you have to see who your user is. Are they old? Are they young? Are they middle aged? Are they males, females? How much income? Uh, what's the level of education that they have? All of these things affect how you design your site, how you design for the, for the legibility, how you decide as far as image choices and, and colors, how you decide all of these things. So again, keep that in mind as you're designing, 
It's all about the user. Learn about their demographics. Learn about their technology literacy. For example, somebody that is older might not have or experience over, uh, say, technology. It's harder for them to navigate. If you're making a website for somebody that is maybe 60 years or older, then you have to consider the type of information that they might want and how they might think about getting that information. But if you think, for example, if you're building this site um, to for retirees, 65 years or older, then you might also have to consider the people that will be supporting them through the process. Maybe their children, grandchildren, uh, somebody that they've hired. All of these things are things that you need to consider as you're designing your site. So you might have a primary group or, or target audience, but then you might have a secondary target audience group as well that you have to take into consideration as well. Now, the other thing that you also have to consider is maybe their finances, depending on where you're building this site or for what group you're building it for, um, and maybe uh, where in the world you're building this for, you have to consider maybe access to internet. In the United States, we have pretty fast internet, but there's faster internet, for example, in Europe, but there's slower internet in some, part, some parts of like South America. So all of these things you have to take into consideration. How how do they access the sites? What are the limitations that they have? What are the operating systems that they use? How much memory, how much internet, internet or bandwidth do they have in regards of accessing that content? All of these things play part, a very strong part, into designing your website. If you're designing a website for the United States, even in the United States, there are rural areas that may not have high internet speeds on mobile devices or may not even even get a signal in those areas. So how do you reach those people if that's what you've been hired to do? Think about that process and go through it as you're thinking about designing this site or application for them. So once again, as you're thinking about usability, think about how your users engage, learn from, and gain some sort of satisfaction from using your application. Think about ways that they're engaging with that content and what are some of the factors that affect their, them using your site and what can you, as a designer, do for them as you're building these applications for them. For them. Think about it and I, I promise you that if you focus on who your target audience is and you focus on the usability for your specific users, you won't go wrong. Until next time, take care.